and welcome to Misunderstood, the show for the politically and culturally misunderstood lady or gent. We are your hosts. I'm Nat. <laughs> and I'm Kat. Today we're going to be talking about some important stuff. We're going to talk about uh, Leah Thomas, because everybody is, um, the trans issue, what is a woman specifically, because that question's been popping around, and then we're going to take a dive into the issue of abortion, so definitely <laughs> stick around for that. And that'll be the show today, but before we get to any of that, we're going to do our patented culture shock moment of the week. Take it away, Nat. Yes, so this young person, Dylan, has been tracking each day that they've become a woman. It's like a diary, a yeah. visual diary, but we're going to start with day one with y'all, so we're just going to play the clip and then we'll react afterwards. Take it away. I suppose um, that this is my coming out video of sorts. While I was non-binary, I would often say that I felt less and less like a boy every day. Um, but now I realize it really was every day I was feeling more and more like a girl. And I didn't know that. Was so scared and a little bit ashamed to even consider myself back on the binary as a trans woman. I have to honor that's who I am. And that's who I am supposed to be. You know, when I was four years old, I came to my mom and I said, I am a girl. And, you know, God made a mistake. <laughs> and she said, you know, God doesn't make mistakes, but I'm not a mistake. I'm, I'm here for a reason. And now it feels like I get to honor that inner child within me that, that knew that so long ago. And so I'd just like to say, <clears throat> Dylan, you're right. You're not a mistake. You are mistaken. <laughs> Yeah. Though. Yeah. Yeah. That's um I love how uh Dylan thinks that to be a woman it means that you have to be sitting in a room full of like sheets Frills. And, like fr frilly With, like, like loose eyeshadow <laughs> loose fabrics and drapes and like you have to dress like Dorothy from Wizard of Oz. Yeah, and it's like this overcompensation because it's like you you are trying so hard to prove you're a woman because I feel like deep down you know that's just not true and it's really sad actually. I think it, it just makes me sad seeing this person is just so confused. And, you know, you're right. Actually, God doesn't make mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> Your mom was right. <laughs> um, and I think you should seek help. I just think it's weird that they're like, gender is not about like the clothes you wear, or the haircut you have. And then it's like, oh, I put on pink clothes and I'm a woman now. Yeah. Like that's what it takes to make you a woman. Like, and that's, day one, you're a, you're just a woman. And you can just decide. You crossed over. You know, because you, you have exactly. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest issue here with this whole um, Matt Walsh trying to define, well, what is a woman? And he's going around, for those of you who don't know, asking people to define it. And I think this started on Dr. Phil, mm -hmm. where he questioned another. I don't know non if it's where it started, but that's where I first saw Me it. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Where he, he was questioning a non-binary person to define a woman and they couldn't do it. And I think it's really dangerous because if we stop being able to define words that are very easy to define, by the way, then what what? chaos will ensue. I mean, this is chaotic, what we're seeing. It's chaotic, that's for sure. And I think it's just, I googled the other day, like, what is a woman? And it said, um, it, it really more it led said, me. I'm not a biologist. Yeah, <laughs> it was no. good, the, like Webster's Dictionary is like, I'm not a biologist. It's true. Um, it led me to the question of what is a female. A female is a, a human being that is capable of producing life and and has eggs. Yeah. So, Dylan doesn't have those things. No, and by the way, Dylan, you don't want to have a period. Yeah, biology matters. I mean, basically, from the moment of conception, you are set apart from your mother in the womb because you are starting to create your own sort of, like, bi biological, like, identity, right? So, like, chromosomes, for example. That's pretty—that that, that happens in, at conception, does it not? X and Y. Yeah. I don't know if it happens at conception. That's a good question. Yeah, maybe we'll um, dive into that. But but we have, you and I have both done our own independent research and anyone, and maybe we'll talk about it more in depth on this show. But there, if you just Google, like even still on Google, you can find these answers, like differences, biological differences between bo men's bodies and women's bodies. Yes. There are, t like there are numerous things with our brain, not just our bodies, but our bone uh, density, our the muscle of mass. Your skin. Yes, yes. Cellulite. We were looking at that the other day. Yeah. Like women have more cellulite than men because our skin is thinner and we have more fat cells and less or less collagen and yada yada. Literally, like if you go down and compare women and men from head to toe, we're different. Have you ever seen a man's toenail? Yeah, they're nasty. It's like a razor. They're disgusting. Yeah, we're not capable of such monstrosities. We're not. And yeah, I just think that that we can't. 
ignore these physical differences. They matter. Um, and a lot of I guess we can call them activists or the progressive left are trying to say that those things don't matter, specifically in the case of Leah Thomas. And I, I don't really understand why. Like, why are we trying to erase women? Why can't we define what a woman is? Like, what is the goal here? And why is it only women? Why aren't men getting erased? Yeah, that's because a great women, question. I mean, I, I'll answer it, but because women aren't barging into men's spaces. I mean, I guess we've always been doing that, but and, and declaring that we are men and that we own the space. Right. Like, we've been doing it for a long time, but we've been doing it as women. So we're like, I, like, you know, it can be annoying, too, where you're like, I'm the only female this and that. But it's, like, kind of important when it's like, wow, you are the only female this and that. But yeah. you're not going in and saying, hey, men, I am one of you now, and I dominate you all. It's like, and I'm the best man here, and I have whatever. You, yeah, no, I think that's true. Do you think part of this is— the fact that society kind of has this open I hate men mentality, specifically like the feminist movement, mm -hmm. it's turned from women's rights into like man hating to an extent, by the way, not everyone. Mm -hmm. And so men are now like, well, I'm hated by society, so I'm just going to become a woman. That reminds me of a funny misunderstood oh, sketch yeah. though, that we did. Maybe we'll Andrew throw to that Chandler. later. But do you think that's part of it? Because everyone wants to be involved in the oppression Olympics right now. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants those brownie points, so mm -hmm. to speak. So being a white cis het male is yeah. like it's bad it's yeah. bad <laughs> I don't want to be that good, you know <laughs> um, so maybe that's partially it yeah maybe but for some reason women aren't noticing that like hello women like we're supposed to be looking out for each other protecting each other mm. but let's just let them into our spaces let's let men into prison yeah it's sort of us. weird how there's women who are advocating for like trans women to be in women's spaces and they're like they're like advocating on the behalf of men. Yeah. And it's like, you guys don't even know. You're you're the same as those girls who are like, I hate drama. Like, I love hanging out with <laughs> dudes because they're so like, easy. And it's like, you just hate women. I feel yeah. like that's what it is. And, and now actual feminism, which I used to think was hating men because the, but those people are not actual feminists. Mm -hmm. Actual feminists is like protect women. Women, which means protect women's spaces and protect the definition of and a woman children, of and course. children, yeah, because no, they're they're an extension of us. Yeah, and I, I saw a clip of Emma Watson, and she was having I don't know what it was for, but she was having a conversation with a trans woman, and this woman was like, "What would you say to people who are uncomfortable seeing me in the bathroom as like this biological male entering a female's bathroom?" And she was like. She did not know what to say, first mm. of all. She, it was like this. She's well-educated, but you would never know hearing her response. Um, <laughs> That's a tough she, question. She, it is. And she was like, you just look someone in the whites of their eyes, and you know that they are, like, human, blah, blah. It was like the just The whites a, of their eyes. Yeah, that's not where I look. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's not where I But look. it was just this, it was this crap. Like, it yeah. was, she had nothing to say. She would she, not like it if a freaking intact male came into her bathroom, yeah. any bathroom that she was in, and just whipped it out and started urinating. Right, and we, and for... To, with that, Leah Thomas has actually been doing that, mm -hmm. has been going into female change rooms with the penis. Am I allowed to say that word? I don't know. We did it. Penis. But it's out and about there. It's just wangle dangle. And it's not that no one's bothered by it. People have, her teammates have said, like, it bothers them yeah, when they, her I think they spoke male genitals their... are exposed in the, like, change room. Yeah. I kind of, in a way, part of me is like, you're in college. Like, unless he's, gee, unless Leah is, like, pushing it on you physically. It's like, uh, avert your eyes. I, I, part of me is thinking that. I think it's But then also, it trickles down to like where, where kids are in the locker room now. Right. And then now they're like, little girls should not be exposed to that. But when you're in college, it's like to pretend that you've never seen a wiener, either in person or on the internet, it's like a little bit. Yeah, that's fair. But to maybe rebut that. Though, I'm just trying to play devil's advocate. They're changing as well. Yes. No, in yeah, that's a good point. That's him, a good point. And, right? and I haven't seen any indication that Leah Thomas is a lesbian, right? Oh, yeah. I, I've never seen that. So I, maybe Leah is... I think I've read somewhere, actually, that Leah is... A straight is trans woman, meaning meaning it's... A gay a, trans woman? Because Leah is attracted to women. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. So you're right. Okay. Yeah. So she's attracted to members of her opposite biological sex. Yes. And she's in change rooms with them where they're exactly. getting naked. Okay, yes. cool. Cool, cool, So cool. that's all right. That's though. great. It's great. You know, it's everything's yeah, fine. It's, everything's great. Um, and according to CBC, we are a bunch of flaming bigots. Well, obviously. <laughs> of course we are. Um, so there's another article I think we should maybe address mm -hmm. here. Uh, Leah Thomas is the latest target in culture war on trans athletes, critics say. Mm-hmm. Mm so... I guess this is in response, of course, to uh, the Florida parental rights and education bill, of course, because that affects 
CBC just so deeply and personally. Yes. Of course. <laughs> There's an interesting quote from that article. Um, Donnelly, I don't know who this, I forget who she was because this was days ago, but I think it's the person who's advocating for uh, someone like Leah to be allowed to perform against women. Yeah, sports prof. Right. Rock. Right. right. So yeah. according to Donnelly, there's little scientific, reliable research on the performance advantages of trans women compared to cisgender women. The International Olympic Committee's IOC recently updated framework for trans athlete indicates this. So I was like, okay, so this person is saying that there is, she seems to have some sort of intel that there's no biological different like uh, so advantage. She is a biologist. Right. So she's a biologist. <laughs> but so I'm like, okay, so I went to the uh, International Olympic Committee's um, source that she sourced. Like I went to that website and it basically just says uh, that the role of testosterone in performance across sports. So they're literally just talking about testosterone. They're not talking, they're literally not talking about bone density, muscle mass, endurance, right. brain, whatever. They're only talking about how much testosterone you have in your m body at the time of the actual performance, which we still have evidence to suggest it has a major difference. It like does, we yeah. talked about um, women, like natural born women with high T can also perform higher. Yep. However, it's just funny that they're like, oh, there's no reliable research. They're only talking about like one of like the seven factors that of makes course, which men different the, than the women. The left does. Yeah. Right? They always pick I'll but you have to do stat. that research yourself. You have to you dig do. in and be like, oh, well, there's no reliable. But we'll look at what they're actually yeah. citing. It's like very, very misleading. So and that's interesting. My favorite part is um, this This person poses this question. Is it fair for George St. Pierre to rip through the UFC and destroy everyone when he fights? Is it fair for Michael Phelps or Serena Williams or any other incredible athletes? She told CBC Radio, high level sport is fundamentally not fair. Yeah, it's not fair, but these people are literally competing against their biological yeah. same, like the same bio, the same gender as them. Yeah. Like I just, I'm like, Ugh. well, I, I read one of the articles um, that we've sourced here. I forget, but it's like basically like uh, co-eds play should be a thing. Yeah. And it is. it's like, okay. And, and one of the arguments was like, well, in, in wrestling, they um, group competitors by weight and mm -hmm. height and reach or whatever, mostly weight, I think not gender, but it's like, okay, Okay, then let's do that with Leah too. Yeah, she weighs at least fifty pounds more than any of those other girls because oh, she's like a more. foot taller. Yeah. She has way more muscle and and bone width. Width her, her bra wingspan. like her her wingspan. So like, like you, if you wanted to get specific, be like, fine, any woman with the wingspan of Leah Thomas can swim against Leah Thomas. There isn't one. No, there is not no, one. No, that person does not exist. That and person is not a real person. So that's so a stupid argument. Why do we think though these weird articles are? trying to make us sympathize with Leah's position and and completely ignoring how biological women are feeling in these spaces. Like, I just don't understand what what's the goal here? Like, what are we trying to achieve? You just don't want to be deemed a bigot? Is that really it? Yeah. Because you're ruining other women's lives. And some women are actually being physically harmed in some instances when you consider things like prisons. So why are we allowing this to happen? Do you really, to your point earlier, do you really just hate women that much? Like, yeah. I mean, I think it's like, I'm, I'm sort of joking when I say this, but I think it's fair to say like not a lot of people actually care about women's sports. Yeah. It's like kind of rude, but it's like they don't make as much money in sports because not a lot, not as many people are watching it. It's a lot of people who are involved in the sports and those families. And there are some fans, of course, but like look at female basketball versus male basketball, female soccer versus male soccer. Yeah, that's so a good point. I could see someone being like, why all of a sudden do you care about female sports? It's not really the sport that I personally care about. It's women. No, it's, and that's what I mean. Yeah, though. no, yeah, I know. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, yeah. To, to answer your question, yeah. it's like, because we're trying to protect women. Like, is it the sport hill that I care about so much dying on? No. no. No, I don't care about the records and the NCAA. I will not watch any of your swimming. Yeah, swimming. I, yeah. I don't watch college <laughs> yeah. swimming normally or ever. But it's like, so when this happens, it starts to trickle down into society to the point where my daughter will be disadvantaged by men yes. in the future. And I'm like, I thought that we stopped that. Like, I, I thought that not. feminism equality, suffragettes, like, I thought we were supposed to be here. And now, we're once again, we've come to a point where men are hurting women. Yeah. And no one cares. And it's like, shh, and let them do it. They're you could argue that about literally all progressive, you know, ideology at this point. It's so progressive. These people are so progressive that we're regressing back. Mm -hmm. Like, look at even there are dorms in the United States that are literally segregating people based on race mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like, how is that? How are it's we not empowered? good? It's not it's good. It's not good. It's not good. We are going backwards. Imagine trying to teach a kid about racism now. And then you're like, yeah, so that's why we separate 
blacks and whites, Billy. And there he's like, what? I thought we were past this, yeah, mom. Like, what? That doesn't, he, we're all equal. And that's why we must be separate. Yeah. Separate but equal. That's that's yeah. like classic racist terminology. It is. It just, like Makes I said, the world is backwards. And I think that's why we continue to talk about this. I think that's why conservatives are also so outraged. And I do think part of, because a lot of people are like, why is it the right wingers, so to speak, who are so peeved by Leah Thomas? And I think it's because Leah Thomas also doesn't, really put that much effort into looking and acting like a woman. And of course, you know, not all women need to be the same. Not all women act the same. Not all women are the same size. Of course, like I respect those things. I respect that we're not all Barbie, you know, but put a little effort in Leah and maybe the right would be like, oh, this person actually genuinely in their heart maybe identifies as a woman. What if Leah Thomas was on a road trip, which I'm sure she does. <laughs> um, Hope so. With her like her school yeah. going to places. <laughs> for meets um and there's there's no toilet and she has to travel a long time and all the other girls in the buffet everyone has to go pee and she does as well but they're like oh the next rest stop is like 20 40 kilometers away so we all have to hold it do you think leah's holding it or do you no. think leah's getting off that bus and peeing she's like a finding man? a tree she's finding a tree like a dude yeah. would like that's what dudes do and i'm like oh it must be nice i have to hold it i have to pop a squat and get bitten in the bum by a snake yeah and you have to have somewhere with enough privacy that you can get yeah. low and then like, you do have to try not to pee on yourself and like wiping yeah. cleaning like men can just pee wherever they want so i'm like hmm, in a pinch do you think that she's still a woman she's like no i will not use my hose right. well and it's the same thing going back to the whole ukrainian person yes. you know yeah, it's like when, when it's convenient it for you, you know? Yeah, and of course, this I'm not accusing her of peeing on the side of the street. I'm just asking, like, I wonder. It's a thought experiment. Yeah. Like, when push comes to shove, where are you peeing, Leah? Just, no. Hopefully not in the pool. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I think that was good. Should we yeah. talk about much more dire things yeah. than women being erased? <laughs> yes. And I'm going to time us this time. Great. Here we go. <laughs> okay, guys. So, abortion. Yeah, let's talk about abortion because, you know, it comes up when... Um, like political races come up every time there's an election. Not in like, Canada because no, the debate's been thrown out the window. Yes. There's no room for discussion there. I actually, um, before we start, I, I want to talk about the very, very brief history of abortion in Canada because there are some very interesting parallels to modern times that I would like to point out. So yeah, let's do it. In 1969, abortion was legal only for medical reasons as um, judged by a group of doctors. So only if it would save your life could you have an abortion. Then, so 1969 is actually when Roe v. Wade in the United States started mm -hmm. happening. So in Canada in 1970, around the same time, the abortion caravan left from Vancouver or uh, New BC yeah, Vancouver, somewhere yeah. traveled to Ottawa to protest the abortion laws. And I'm like, and you know who was prime minister in 1970? Uh oh, true Pierre daddy. Trude, Pierre <laughs> Trudeau. Trudeau. And I'm like, I wonder if he was hiding from the abortion caravan and freezing all their bank accounts. Because, you know, similar, That's funny. if not exactly the same. In 1982, uh, Trudeau enacted the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And then in 1988, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled that the uh, charter was being infringed by abortion laws hmm. and that um, a woman's right to something, something, her body. You know, yeah. we, we all get it. We get you. Life, liberty, and whatever. Um, and then in 1989, the Supreme Court ruled that no father has a legal right to veto a woman's abortion. Yeah, so just going back a little bit, let's also just let people know, for those who don't know what Roe v. Wade actually was. Yeah, so it was a landmark decision of the U.S. Supreme Court in which the court ruled that the Constitution of the U.S. protects a woman's liberty, a pregnant woman's liberty, to choose to have an abortion without excessive government restriction. And pro-life activists, active, act, whoa, activists, wow, in the U.S. are trying to get this reversed uh, this year. Yeah, actually. so basically this federal law overrode all the, sorry, yeah, the federal law mm -hmm. overrode all of the, like, um, states, state laws yeah. in the United States. Um, so the reason I think we wanted to talk about this is because of the babies, the five fully formed aborted babies that were found in D.C., uh, I guess last week, I think it was around April 5th. Um, so basically the there were a group was uh, like a pro-life activist group. Uh, had A whistleblower had informed them that there were fetuses at a local abortion clinic in D.C. Um, so basically they collabed and they arranged to pick these fetuses up and bring them home. And then they were going to return them or give them, hand them over to the police rather. Um, so basically the babies 
were in late gestational ages um, and their apparent sustained injuries show violations of the Partial Birth Abortion Act as well as the Born Alive Infants Protection Act, which are federal crimes. So they're alleging that this abortionist from this clinic uh, did this illegally. They were aborted illegally, essentially, is why there's so much outrage and confusion. Yes. Yes. And it's extremely troubling um, because of California. Um, so, the, OK, let's let's show let's show this article title because it is a little bit misleading, like just slightly. It says California just introduced a new bill that allows mothers to kill their baby seven days after birth in the name of reproductive health. So, yes and no. Um, it would make you think that at, after the baby's born, you can go to the doctor and have it aborted or something. That is not the case. No, that's not. That's the not case. the case. Yes. That's what Although, I thought. Although there is an argument to say that they people might actually start yes, doing that, yes. right? Well, I mean, that's the thing. So now you, the mother can't get persecuted or prosecuted for the baby dying up until seven days, which apparently is like a thing. Like if your baby dies and you can be like charged. Held liable, yeah. Yeah, but I would, I would assume like, because I'm a reasonable person, I would assume, well, that's only the case when it's clear that the mother like locked the baby in a room and didn't touch it for seven days. Right. Like, which I'm, is what a lot of abortion clinics do, yes. by the way. Yes. So it's like, ooh. And, yeah. and you can have a, an abortion at any stage. Yes. Third trimester, go for it. So yeah. why not? It's basically like you can kill your baby up until the before the day it's born. And that feels wrong. Yes. And also law enforcement would be barred from investigating an infant death. So that's where the slippery slope is. And that's mm -hmm. why this discovery of these five babies who were clearly like full babies. Fully formed. Like there's were, pictures we won't show. We them. won't show you, but you should go look you for yourself. Look. I think um, we it, owe it, it to them to look at these images. Yeah. Frankly. Yeah. If if you're yeah, that's a really good point now, because I was like, you might not want to look at them. And I did not because it upset me a lot. Yeah. It's but disgusting. I'm glad that I saw it because it it's really kind of humbling. It's humbling and it's also like, wow, I didn't, like, when I was doing research for this episode, I was not aware of how fast fetuses grow in the womb. Like, yes. This, so basically at 10 weeks, which is where you can no longer have, like, 10 to 12 weeks is where you can no longer have, like, the pill abortion. So you have to right. have a surgical abortion, which is way more gruesome. Um, even at 10 weeks, though, it's like, oh, it's 10 weeks. 10 weeks? They are, they look like babies. They're small. They're pr they're quite small. They're, like, yeah. this big. But they have a fully formed head. Mm -hmm. They have arms. They have legs. They have a little belly. Like, they look like little alien babies. Yeah. And they they look human to me. They are human. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No, exactly. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. No, but, definitely. But like it's it's weird that so you can still actually get an abortion up until twenty four weeks in Canada, um, and that baby can come survive out of the womb. Yes, they can survive. It's basically out of the a womb. viable child at that yeah. point. Um, and I I was researching on Planned Parenthood Toronto, which yeah, was very really upsetting. Source. Yeah. Well, it is a reliable yeah, like source because that's who's that's who's like giving no, you I know, the, the intel. That's but what I mean. Like, it's if, scary how reliable. Was, <laughs> yes. They're really not hiding it. No. Yeah. And so if I was just like a young girl and I was Googling, like, how do I get an abortion in Toronto? They were like, oh, you can do it anywhere. You can do it like this. You can do a pill abortion up to 10 weeks. And um, basically, after 24 weeks, you can't have an abortion in Canada. But don't worry, Planned Parenthood is like, oh, but if you need one past 24 weeks, you can just go to the United States. Here's some numbers you can call. So that's highly upsetting. Another upsetting thing about that is that they kept referring to the fetus as pregnancy tissue. Yeah. They were like, oh, you will, we'll have expelling of blood and clots, including pregnancy tissue, which is it's really like baby parts arms. Parts of the baby. Parts of the baby. Yes. So it's like... It's a huge topic and a really hard one to talk about, especially among women, because you never know who might have had an abortion and you don't want to. Yeah, we don't want to alienate anyone. Like if you've had an abortion. Or like bring up trauma. Sure, yeah. Like, um, and I think that's a good point because it's funny because so many people say that, oh, women don't have psychological like effects after getting an abortion. They're fine. They're peachy. They're good yeah, to go. Yeah, try saying, try making an abortion joke to someone who's just had an abortion. Yeah, exactly. Like Not it's gonna clearly work. there's psychological yeah. damage there. Yeah. And I think, I think the biggest thing that I want to call out in this conversation is just the fact that this Plan Planned Parenthood in the United States makes billions of dollars. 95% of what they do, though they claim it's like reproductive Women's health. Women's health. It's not. It's abortions. They they actually have abortion quotas. You can find this all on the internet. It's there. They're not even hiding it anymore. Um, and I just, I think it's important to talk about that aspect of it rather than, you know, we don't want to point fingers at anyone who's had an abortion. That's between you and God. I I hope that you heal from whatever pain you probably have. You know, like we, we want to approach this humbly and with compassion because, you know, we're not, we don't know everything. Either. Yeah, we don't. And, and we're humans. And yeah, 
But like this business is clearly, it's a business. It's a business. And it was actually founded by someone who wanted to exterminate yeah. minorities yes. and poor people. Planned Parenthood has since cut ties with Margaret Sanger. But yeah. if you Google Margaret Sanger, you will be disgusted with what you read. Yes, yeah, 79% of them are in walking distance of minority neighborhoods to this day, by the way. Yeah, to this day. So that's just a little It's called sus. eugenics. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's evil. Mm -hmm. So it was, you know, and of course, I mean, I think the killing of anything is evil, but um, the killing of innocent babies specifically because of the color of their skin is just egregious and like- Something we should all be against. We should all be against that, mm -hmm. yes. And I think, you know, even reading more about this and stuff, like Teen Vogue writes about abortion and so we're trying to teach people that this isn't something that should be, as Hillary Clinton coined, safe, legal, and rare. It was actually Bill Clinton. Great. But yeah. she parroted it. Yeah, definitely. Because yeah. she was said she spoke about it yes, more recently yes. than him. But it's not safe, legal, or rare. In fact, since the onset of abortion, it's actually increased, like since it's become legalized. So yeah. where 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 do we go wrong here? So look, I, I don't know, but it's the culture. Like you yeah. just mentioned Teen Vogue and we have that article that we were looking at earlier mm -hmm. that was basically the sentiment was like, yeah, uh, abortions are about to get more expensive, ladies. Like you you might have to travel 100 miles to get one. 16-year-old girl reading this article. Yeah. You know? And it's like, why aren't we talking about like safe sex or like no sex or yeah. like birth control, birth control, natural forms, of course, please. We've talked about birth control yeah. before. It's not and like the best. love, yeah, like like falling Ryan. in love. <laughs> also, I was reading an article and apparently millennials are not using condoms. It's decreasing. They don't mm. care about STDs. It's like, I wonder well, why. Yeah. Mm, because the consequences are so small. And that's the problem. I think abortion has become a form of birth it has. control. It has. And that's, that's Disgust, egregious, this disgusting. Like, you know, and we should not be normalizing. This no. is really the biggest. Morally, it's it's wrong. Yes. And it can affect your body. Yeah. And it's not safe for women, actually, contrary to popular belief. And you are killing a living human baby. The, 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 the concept you know? of like an abortion pill, I didn't honestly didn't even know those existed until doing this research. I thought it was just the one, the surgical abortion. Right. But the abortion pill is like really... Up. Sorry. Yeah. Whoops. I'll bleep that. <laughs> we'll bleep it. We'll bleep it. <laughs> um, it's really messed up because it I is. didn't even think like, what is that doing to your body? Yeah. That it would kill. So I, I read into it. It detaches the, the fetus from the wall, the wall yeah. but then you have to, so you have to have another pill that opens up your cervix so that the pregnancy tissue can be expelled. But the point is, is not just like, even when you have a surgical abortion, they have to open up your cervix and they can do that with medication, which is opening your cervix is pain. That's what we yes. feel when we have period cramps. It's yeah, cramp. extremely yeah. painful. It's when you have nice. a baby, you want to be like 10 centimeters dilated. Uh, we probably, when we have our periods, probably are like a millimeter or something. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's like that pain is excruciating. It is. So you, it's not like having an abortion. You're like, oh, I'm not going to have, I don't want to get pregnant because I don't want to go through labor. You're still going to feel the pain you're yeah. going to have. And they don't tell you that. Yeah. Well, yeah, they don't. And that's the thing. There's just not enough informed consent about this. I don't think a lot of women are aware of the risk. And I think a lot of women are ignorant to the actual procedure and what, what yeah. happens. I mean, you mentioned to me last Friday about how there was that video of a baby being aborted and it was reaching for its life, like reaching. Yeah, there's like, a, it's like an ultrasound yeah. view and you can see something coming in to take it and the baby's grabbing its mother's Trying like, to get away. stomach and uterus to, to stay alive. Right. And it's like once a, a human being has the ability to know it's alive and it doesn't want to die, like you're committing murder. I yeah, would argue. I think that's what that's called. Yeah, I yeah. and I wanted to ask you this, like not you, but like pose it as a question. Like, why do you think we use the word abortion instead of murder? Is it because it's different, or is it because we're trying to make people feel like it's different? I think different? we're trying to soften it up. I think. I think, like I said, I don't think most people know what an actual abortion procedure is. I've heard of them in length. It's yeah. disgusting. Don't eat before you listen to it. But why, why, why are we shying away from what's actually happening? Why is our society not open to telling women exactly what's happening when they go into that room and spread their legs? Like, mm -hmm. why? Mm -hmm. it's, it seems sus. And it seems weird that people are trying to make this, like you said, normal and like almost glamorous exactly like, like shout no one's, abortion no one's believing that stuff though. yeah like I that hope not i don't think it's taking off but i remember i forget what the context was but there was a bunch of pro uh choice slash pro abortion women outside of like dc or some sort right. of um government building and they all popped like the abortion pill together do you remember <gasps> oh, that no but it's like are you all 
pregnant? Yeah, and why? Was it just a sugar pill? Like, first of all, that's such a weird thing to do. And second of all, <laughs> did you just take a pill that poisons you for no reason to prove a point? And it's it's like a, this weird religion. Yeah, it's like this it's weird a cult, cult thing, and it's kind of demonic in a way. Like you're just like, I don't care about bit. this. I don't care about this living thing. Like screw it. It's like child sacrifice at this point. Like okay. You can you can go with Bill Clinton and safe, legal, and rare, sure. But is that really what's happening now? And that's no. not even what they what they want. Yeah, no. exactly. Like that was in 1992, and, and Hillary Clinton has parroted that recently somewhat. Yeah. But it's like that's not actually what they're pushing. No. So, so strange. It is strange, and I think going back to the five fetuses that were found, um, you know, if this is happening at one clinic, these. Infant, this infanticide, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. It's going to be happening across America, definitely happening here. I can, I'm sure of it. I mean, you know, it's there's not a lot of information about abortion in Canada. Well, I would point out that this article, it, we saw the same story in two different articles on our source list, but mm-hmm. I have not seen any peep about that outside of right. you sending me links. Right. So, you got to look no for one, it. You have to look for it. So you're not even aware that this is happening and you think, oh, abortion, you know, they like— I would have thought that if a baby survived an abortion, that they would care for it and do something with it. But apparently they don't have to. They don't. And now they legally aren't even required to. Yeah, it's So it's like, that's really messed up. It's evil. There was a video that, like, someone filmed her conversation with that doctor that you're referring to. Yeah. And he was like, if you are pregnant and you go to the hospital and the baby's born prematurely, like, they'll do anything that they can to keep the baby alive. He's like, we don't do that here. Yeah. And so she's like, so if something happened and, like, the baby survived, he's like, yeah, we— I, I don't, I wouldn't like deal with it. And it's like, <sighs> woo. Seems pretty evil to me. That's murder. <laughs> and why aren't we giving these babies a chance? Why? Why? There's so many people, couples who want to have children, who want to adopt newborn babies. Why? Well, think about our conversation from the other week about surrogacy. And yeah. I had this like crazy epiphany moment where I was like, uh, okay, on one hand, we're sterilizing ourselves with plastic and hairspray and birth control and all the things that we're Olaplex. doing. Olaplex. Olaplex everything and then we're um, outsourcing surrogacy to third world countries and and places in Europe like the Ukraine Mm -hmm. so that people here who are sterile can have babies and then the people who are here who are fertile and having babies are killing them them. what are we doing like we're playing God yeah we're we're creating life and we're taking it away and that to me is the end of a civilization John Legend that that was great yeah great way of putting that and it's true though (laughs) why are we why are we doing this and and let's just round this out, but you know, we'll round it out we'll real it nicely, out. <laughs> you know, because we talked about a lot. But I mean, we need to be teaching women better ways of navigating this. Yeah, ultimately, like yeah. learn more about your body, birth control. Maybe don't have sex if you're not willing to handle the consequences of having sex. It was in, like it's reproductive, guys. That's what it is. I mean, it, you can it's fun, sure, but like yeah. you know, yeah. it's it's good. Enjoy it, but like you're supposed like you're you know. You're making a baby. You can make a baby. Yeah, so, you can make a baby. Or at least freaking wear a condom, you crazy kids. Yeah. Like, oh, just, I, I sound like such an old fogey, but I'm like, if you're going to have sex, wear condoms. I know. Oh my like, God. STDs are also real. I don't get why people aren't scared of those. I was so scared of those in Me high school. Too. We watched those videos those and I was are, like, they worked. I was like, yeah. I'm going to get pregnant and I'm going to get an STD and I'm not having sex. And it worked for a long yeah. time. So abstinence is key. <laughs> yes. You That's guys. what we're going to call this episode. No, I'm just, <laughs> maybe. Um, should we just stop? <laughs> Let's just stop there. Yeah. But, you know, um, in terms of resources, liveaction.org is a great yeah. resource. It's American. However, they, they're they very educated on this topic. It's so sad that there aren't more like Canadian pro-life websites that we can just throw to there are i will some. look and see but um we talked about him last week samuel say he's very yes. passionate about this topic so he will have great resources yes. he's okay. volunteered a lot in, in that's canada great. in the toronto area what's his website called slow to write.com slow to write.com. yeah so you can check out more resources there and maybe if you know maybe if this just is do your new, research yeah definitely even if you're not looking to have an abortion yourself like when it comes up in conversation we want to be compassionate and we don't want to like yell at people for no. having questions about it or for if they've done it and like we don't know how they're feeling now um, but definitely don't shy away from the conversation, which yeah. I know is a really hard thing to do because you don't want to hurt your friend's feelings or whatever, but it's a conversation that you need to have. And like, we have good resources yeah. and because don't al- shy away from it. No, because ultimately, you know, these babies, they, they are made in God's image. And we as Christians are called to protect the least of these and the most vulnerable, and they are the most vulnerable and they deserve to have a voice too. 
So And also we all started out as yeah. like clumps of cells yeah. and, and pregnancy tissue and we were all protected. And Jesus also yeah. came, came to earth that Even way. Jesus. So uh hey yeah. there. Must be important. Must be important if the savior of our universe came out through a woman's uterus. A birthing person. So a to birthing speak. person, sorry, yes. A nipple so, haver. Uh, well, uh, we're going to round things out okay. then. Bye. We're your hosts. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bye. Um, thank you for listening thank to you. Misunderstood. This yes. is episode nine. I can't believe we've come so far. I know. We look great. We have an age today. We have day. an age today. <laughs> um, if you want to catch the show, it always comes out Tuesdays at 7 p.m. on uh, everywhere. It comes out on Rebel News Plus where you can watch it. And then if you want to get all the info right away but you aren't subscribed to Rebel News Plus yet, you can listen on all your favorite podcast channels. Yes. That's what I do on my ride home. I listen to beautiful Nat and... <laughs> generic cat. No, that's, that's <laughs> fake news. Where else can we listen to it? Um, yeah, so every Saturday at 2 p.m., the show actually drops for free on rebelnewsplus.com or you can go to watchmisunderstood.ca. Um, so that'll be up on YouTube or Rumble as well. So definitely give it a listen. And if you're, you know, if you're listening via podcast on Tuesdays and you're like, I want to watch this, you can also watch it for free. So that's great. And uh, share it with your friends. Yes. We, you know, we need more subscribers on our own YouTube channel as well. And your grandmas and your grandpas yeah, and your grandkids gonna and your love aunts, this show. your grandpa is gonna listen my dad texted me the other day because he was drinking and he was like i just listened to nat and cat and you guys are stars and i was like Facts. well if her dad said it it must be true so <laughs> definitely subscribe to our youtube channel misunderstood show um i think that's everything oh and follow us on social media our social medias are gonna be here so thank you so much and it's been a it's been a pleasure it's been a journey it's been a journey we right? love you bye bye